Hi, I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions. This week's presentation is on photovoltaics, which is incredibly interesting to myself personally. It ties in very well with the agrivoltaics presentation. So after watching this, you'll understand what photovoltaics is, what are some of the advantages, the disadvantages, and the intended and unintended consequences for the environment. So hit that subscription button, strap yourself in, and let's get started. Photovoltaics, what is it? Effectively, it's a photovoltaic solution that covers a body of water. And it's usually of a commercial size, so there's no real small photovoltaic systems. Now, the largest to date is SunGrow's Huan Solar Farm capacity of 400 megawatt. But there is a plan in Indonesia, and it's underway to build a 200 megawatt floating PV system. Closer to home, floating PV has been appearing in Australia, but usually quite small projects. These include an installation at a wastewater treatment facility at Jamestown in South Australia, a 100 kilowatt system at Happy Valley Reservoir in Adelaide, and a 99 kilowatt installation in Lismore, New South Wales. So where do these floating voltaic systems go? Effectively, we are talking about man-made and natural water catchment areas and primarily fresh water. In fact, at this point in time, there's no example in Australia that I know of where floating PV has been incorporated into a salt water situation. What are some of the water saving advantages? So by having part coverage, you can re reduce the water evaporation on a body of water. And this depends on local conditions and the percentage of the covered surface. In Australia, a decided advantage since about 80% of evaporation is saved by the use of a photovoltaic system. Now in Australia, we have 16,000 square kilometres of water catchment areas. So you can see how the potential of um, floating PV is quite incredible. Now what are some of the other advantages? The main advantage of floating PV plants is that they do not potentially displace arable land. And this is really important, and we've, we've covered this in our agrivoltaics presentation. Floating PV plants are more compact than land-based plants, and their construction and decommissioning is, is more straightforward. The main point is that no fixed structures exist like the foundations used for a land-based plant, so their installation can be totally reversible. So one of the intended or unintended consequences of floating PV is a reduction in algal blooms due to the fact that you're putting a layer between the sun and the water, therefore reducing the amount of UV light hitting that water surface and um, stimulating the, uh, the growth and the expansion of, the, of these algal blooms. What about cooling? Effectively, the panels are cooled through passive cooling due to the proximity to the water's surface and can also be active by spraying the PV modules. And we are talking about fresh water in this situation. You can also use submerged PV modules. Potential gain in energy harvesting is between eight to 10%, depending on who you speak to. Now, a big thing with solar ground mount systems is solar tracking. And does this apply to photovoltaics? And the answer is yes. So a floating platform can be rotated and this can be done without wasting too much energy and there's really no complex mechanics involved. So this involves more cost while the energy gains can range from 15 to 25% in regards to the output of the system. And it's not as complicated as the ground mount systems because effectively you're talking about this array floating on a body of water and once the initial momentum is um, overcome, the ability to rotate that array so it captures a wider range of light from in the morning to the afternoon is not as hard as, say, in a, um, a ground mount situation. Now, there's various methods of solar tracking. There's central mooring and there's the tracking is generated by bow thrusters, effectively the same principle is used on larger boats and ships to actually manoeuvre into, into a berthing situation. The other method is mooring in the centre and you use a system of ropes with a winch to actually slowly rotate um, 
the system around a central point, like a pinwheel. The third method is a platform inside a reference frame, and this turns thanks to a rolling wheel system. The fourth system involves a submerged support moored in a triangular way, and the platform rotates in respect to the submerged supports. These systems are quite complicated, but the gains tend to outweigh the additional costs involved. But it is early days. With any commercial project, whether it's renewable or non-renewable, obviously there's, there's cost and there's things that have to be taken into consideration. In the case of a floating PV system, obviously there's some differences between, say, a ground mount system. So you're talking about um, wind loading. Will that be the same as a ground mount situ situation? The, the stability of the structure because you're floating on a body of water, very important. How is the system moored? There's a lot of different systems. Is there a pylon system? Is it a case where you're actually mooring to the, the shoreline? Um, the distances from the actual array to the shoreline in regards to cabling. How are you going to do the cabling? Is it going to be un underwater? Is it going to be on top of the pontoons? Is it going to be buried? Is it going to be trenched? There's a lot of things to think about. But I think probably the, one of the most important from the, the perspective of the health and safety of the installers is the, that those site logistics because you are dealing with a body of water. Now water bodies are subject to increased scrutiny measures compared to a, say, a traditional ground mount or roof mount system. And these um, measures are imposed by relevant government authorities and they conduct com comprehensive environmental impact assessments, so EIAs. In general, the capex of floating PV systems are currently around 5 to 15 percent higher compared to a ground mount PV system, but in some European countries a 20 plus megawatt system is already considered competitive. Among OECD nations, Australia is ranked fourth highest in water use. And this water is derived from catchments that cover an area of almost 16,000 square kilometres. So you can see the potential photovoltaics in Australia is just fully being recognised now. Conclusion. Flotovoltaics involves PV projects installed on water catchment and treatment areas. The advantages include the non-displacement of valuable land and increases in output. The increased cost over ground mount systems is around 5 to 15 per cent higher. Thanks so much for watching our presentation on flotovoltaics. I found it incredibly interesting personally and I could see the connections with agrivoltaics, uh, which is a, a previous presentation that we've done. Look, if you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, feel free to drop us a line. If you like what you see, hit that subscription button. Bye for now and look forward to presenting more videos.